Hey guys, this is uh, Chief Landless, and I'm going to be doing a how-to tutorial on basically what I use to uh, create my YouTube videos and um, what I use to upload to YouTube as I, I promised to make this a long time ago and then I never did and I feel sorry for doing so and I thought I'm going to make this video anyways and I'll upload it and then um, you guys can learn from it. So um, this is all going to be using the software um, basically using the devices of the Hophog HD PVR 1219 is what I'm using. I'm using Sony Vegas Pro 10 for editing and I'm using a free comp uh, video compressor software that I'll also include how to and where to download for free and it just compresses the quality of the video and um, so that doesn't take up so much space on your laptop and it makes it way easier to upload to YouTube instead of waiting hours you can upload a video in about half an hour if it's a big video like what I like to upload but needless to say it, let's get on to it so um make sure you have your Hapog uh, HD PVR and your video game console whether it be PlayStation or an Xbox all hooked up properly so that when I, uh, you go to a your to the software provided which is inside of this this is a folder I just made a cool design for that it's uh, called total media extreme right about here and you click on it it opens up this I don't need this anymore so it opens up to this and it's uh, you click on record video you gotta make sure your Xbox is on and your Hapog HCPVR is on you don't need your TV on if you've done it correctly and uh, if this ever does load, mine takes a little while. And there I am, right there. You can see my dashboard for my console. And if I grab my controller, you'll hear that if I go up, it's about a half second delay between my TV and the hub hog. It's barely noticeable. And um, the lag, really, it depends on which type of computer you have. The better, obviously, the less lag there will be between the difference between your computer preview, what you're looking at right here in this little box, and what you what what you see on your TV when you're playing your game. Now, um, in order, if you have if your computer doesn't run that fast, I suggest you actually click this checkbox down here, enable preview and recording off. Right now, I'm not recording, so you still see. And what it does, it'll just change the area you see here to black, and therefore your computer doesn't need to run as hard but I prefer to keep it on sometimes because sometimes I record without even having my TV on as I just go to theater mode. But regardless, I, um, I record play using the PlayStation 3 settings that makes it record on a file called M2TS as the best file, uh, I guess, encryption file st style that the Hophog HD Fever offers. If you click on any of the other ones, you see that it changes the file down below. Uh, regardless, it doesn't matter which console you're using, uh, uh, PlayStation 3 offers the best quality for some weird reason. But um, yes, uh, these come standard. So yes, these are standard. I don't mess around with these. And um, click on the device settings. I do not edit these are. These are all default you can increase the brightness and contrast to whatever you want some people like to make it brighter while they record as some video games are darker and tougher to see on YouTube because keep in mind YouTube I, YouTube makes videos a little bit darker than they really should be I don't know the reason behind that but that's what they do and my avatar agrees with me yes he is nodding his head <laughs> anyways so we got that format settings Whoa. There we go. That took a little while. Um, my resolution is 1280 by 720 at 60 frames per second. The bitrate quality is at 13.5 megabits per second. That's the best. That's what I use because my laptop is... I custom ordered it. It's a very fast laptop. Anywhere between 11, maybe 10 megabits per second or, uh, or higher, you will get a very nice quality. Uh, it all depends whether or what you want to play with the slider bar. I use 13.5. Um, a few months ago, before I had this laptop, I was using around 11, and there seems to be little to no difference. 
Make sure this is at constant bitrate. You do, want, do not want this fluctuating to try and match um, what the video feed is being fed through to your laptop is. And um, I keep these um, at default. These have not been altered. If you know what these really do, maybe you can tell me. Otherwise, I do not see any reason what, why they would change anything too drastically. So that's, that's okay. Um, make sure you go down here. Uh, you can see that here I'm using an E drive, which is my two, di two terabyte external hard drive. So I, you can just click down here and um, browse folder and click to where you want to save it. I save it to the terabyte hard drive so that uh, I don't clog up the space of my actual laptop. So once you're done recording, you click this, stop the recording. You can even set the timer, and then your file should be in that folder. I make it to that to edit folder as a lot of the files are stored with dates and numbers that really turn into a blur if you're not keeping track. And so I put everything that I record with, records are into a separate folder, and once I'm done editing, I toss it out of the folder so I don't accidentally upload a, or use a video more than once. So now that we're done here, minimize this sucker. We don't really need you. Going back here, we can close this. You don't need that while you're recording. You see it's still down here. Now if we go over here, this is where I use Sony Vegas Pro 10. Now um, what you want to do here is project properties. You want to, uh, you know what, I suggest pausing the video right here and copying whatever you see here. Uh, make a custom template, you just save it once you're done copying these settings. And um, that's what I use with 1280 by 720, exactly how it records, frame rate per second. Hophog records very close to 60, so you're, um, you're safe with putting 60 frames per second. These are all pretty much standard, just follow these. 32-bit 30 floating point range, full range, whatever the heck that means. One, best uh, Gaussian, as I've looked at many YouTube uh, videos and they say to use this setting and I'm not too sure what the heck it does but it makes things work and I listen to those guys I don't touch this um, other than that the only thing I really suggest you could change would be the sample rate as it will you know help reduce size of the file but remember when you throw things in compressor compressor garbage in garbage out you have to put in something amazing you have to put in something of high quality to get something of high quality out so yes I leave that don't even use that tab, not that, none of that. So yes, all of this, copy that. This is what you're using your this Sony Vegas to work from. It's like the canvas. So if I go down to here, I have my uh, to edit folder here. I recorded this a while ago and I actually uploaded it. By the time we're watching this, I already used this file for uh, one of my commentaries most recently. So I'm just gonna click and drag. You can also go file, import, media, and search through your folders yourself to get that. To edit, let me just quickly go around here. Uh, you can see all my folders, Black Ops. Let's do this. Grab my intro there. New intro with Indian music. <laughs> Old full file names. I need to go through this and reorganize them. Go back here. Don't need that. This is all we need. Uh, I renamed the file name so I know what type of gameplay it is. It's a sniper demolition going 46 and 11. So what I do here is I slide this up here. Oh, good point. Put preview at auto. It gives you the best preview. You um, obviously it'll, it'll look better if you stretch it out a little bit more to match the, rec uh, I guess the 1280 by 720. So what I'm going to do here is click and drag my intro. You can see the video track up here, and then the audio track down below. You can adjust the audio level down here. Uh, I like to. I think this is at a good audio level where it is right now. Then what I like to do is I like to minimize these because I trust them. I don't need to edit them. And my phone is beeping like crazy. I should probably <laughs> always put that on silent. What I am recording something. Regardless, back to what I'm doing here. I'm going to click and drag the gameplay file here. As you can see, it's kind of a ghost image here showing you how long it kind of is. Now I like to match it up with the right after the intro so I like to put it on a separate track therefore you can adjust the audio level so you see the little blue that's kinda of popped up right behind the intro there that means it's snapped there and bam it's loaded up you see the audio track here 
and then if I minimize this and then I can add my outro that used to be my intro I'll put it back here snaps onto the back you can always double check you can see the blue line snapping I'm just clicking and dragging right now now what I like to do is the gameplay records at a very um, high volume I guess level um, if you, if it's perfectly fine if you want to render this right now and upload it to YouTube but if you're gonna talk odds are you're not gonna be able to talk over top of your gameplay so what I like to do is I like to reduce it to about 22 um, negative sorry negative 22 decibels that's um, usually the, uh, the audio volume that I put for my gameplay as I talk over it that way you can actually hear me and sort of hear the gameplay and where it's not overpowering so if I right click down here insert our audio track you can have audio track here and um, I'll go aim to record I'll just tell it to record the audio there even though I should you know there you go see you can see my voice fluctuating back and forth and uh, it's aimed to re record so it should record up until this point over at the end by my outro or maybe here not really too sure and um, I click record and if you have your microphone set up properly to Sony Vegas which is pretty much the default setting you will well there's still volume sorry we can you will hear you'll see my voice being recorded so I'll stop this and uh, you see my voice there what I like to do is um if you look down here I'll, I usually increase my voice just a little bit maybe to about three decibels and I leave the gameplay at negative 22 and my phone is still beeping I apologize this is not professional in any way <laughs> this is all informative and just you know you know between you and me so yes um, I'll just say done for now I'll go delete that file later I don't need it so I like to increase it to about three decibels once it gets there oh whatever that's good enough there minimize this as you if you want to add in more video tracks you, if you put a video track above and you put text above your text uh, you can save templates of text but if you want to put text over top of something obviously over since whoa sample text since this track up here is above this it will be visible if I move there see look sample text is right there because it's over top of that and um, that's pretty much really the biggest lowdown that you need you don't really need any more information about video layering all you, all you need to know is that if this is below this this track will cover that but that this isn't needed delete that so there's that now what I like to do obviously save but I'm not saving this because I don't need this and um, so yes so we have our gameplay footage fine here if you hold um, this is for PC again if you hold alt and you move your cursor a little bit if I actually put my cursor somewhere in the middle of a video here if you see the frame number here and you hold alt and you go left or right on your I guess directional pad your number uh, your arrow keys you can go through every single individual frame per second and pinpoint certain points in the video that way you can time things perfectly you can cut when needed which by the way S is to split a track I hit the S key there it splits it ta-da it's split control Z I can put that back together I can I hope there we go if you want to separate your video from the audio track if you just want gameplay and no audio you can always just silence it by clicking mute but that still adds to the file size so you can go group remove from you can tell it to remove that from that and you can remove the video freely from the audio from the gameplay but you can also bring it, put it back together with group create new and it works together yay it moves together it's a great way to then if you want to group everything together so I grab the, the gameplay by holding control you can click on the intro the gameplay your commentary your outro if you have any right click create new and now basically you're working with a very incomplete why did not not work sorry grab that grab that create new you're select no are you selected yes you are take two sorry guys create new and okay why is this being sorry this is being very very picky unless I'm being blind create new group and that should work there you go it's acting like a 
already edited video file. It's all grouped together. That way you can snap it to another video if you want to edit, edit things together. But that's all done. Your video should be done with. And now you go File, Render As, and I also have a, a special custom set render settings. Make sure you do not have this right here. You see this here, it's been beiged out on my render loop region only. As you can see, if you look over by my cursor right now, that little yellow arrow, if you have accidentally made two yellow arrows appear somewhere stretched across your timeline, that is a looped region. Make sure that this is not checked unless you only want to record that looped region bounded by these yellow arrows. As you can only see one here, as I have not looped a certain, certain region to preview. So make sure that's done, or else you might be rendering some only 30 seconds of a gameplay, and you'll be sitting there scratching your head going, why the hell is only 30 seconds of my 10-minute gameplay showing up? So there you go. I like to, um, back to being all serious, I like to render into uh, save the file type as a Sony AVC MP4. It's... I find it's one. It's a very high quality, but not the. It's not the greatest. I know that for sure. But the file size size itself, it is not that big. It is not that big of a file size to deal with. And um, anyways, you can always delete the file once you've uploaded it to YouTube. But custom render settings. I've made a template here, and I've saved it. Now, if you go to custom here. And you can see what I have recorded. I again suggest that you pause this video and you look at these settings. Video format, AVC, high definition, 1280 by 720, same as before, baseline, Quebec. Been told by other YouTube tutorials that you should have it at CABAC. Frame rate, 59.94, as that's what the Hubbog records at. You can slap on 60, no difference, it's 0.06 difference. I don't even know why that's there. That should be 60. Anyways, um, this non-progressive scan, one bit rates per second. Now, if you remember back recording from your hub hog when I told you to slide and test between 11 and 13.5, this is exactly where this comes into play. If you were tell to, if you recorded it at 11 through the hub hog software and you tell it to render at 13.5 you're adding extra file size you're stretching it you're making needless size unneeded so I suggest that you record matching what you recorded from sorry what you render you render this number matching the, no the number you recorded with I rendered with 13.5 which is megabits so that's why it is 13.5 million bits per second audio no need to change that system MP4 project use project settings or or click down and do best but if you follow my tutorial correctly project settings are at best and or maybe greater so click OK actually before you click OK sorry ignore that sorry if I messed up somebody right now but once you're done all of this save it type in the title here I called it best and save the template that way you can just click on the template and uh, your settings are all there to go. So I can click save and render it. And rendering speed all determines on your PC's processing speed. This for me, about a 10 minute long video will render in about an hour and 20 minutes. And I have already rendered this gameplay before. So we can minimize this and bring up something I want to show you guys. Right here is my free video converter. Here's the website up here. I also put it in the description. It is free. It is amazing video converter. You can use it for many things. As you can see, this little banner design here, it is perfect for converting stuff. So now, if I quickly to edit, I don't really need that. Um, I've already rendered a commentary that's about that needs to be compressed, anyways. Now, where is it? I called it under a rock. Don't ask why. So I have, I already downloaded the compressor software here. It's called FreeMake Video Converter. Let that load. I'll close this. I'm going to have this window open containing my recently rendered video through Sony Vegas. It's 12 minutes long and it came out at 1 gigabyte. That's of size. 
Now I'm looking at these titles are looking kind of sexual. Anyways, here we go. Here's the software. As you can see, you can import video, audio, DVD, photo. You can u even use URLs, and um, you can render. You can compress it or change its settings rather to match anything: apples, Androids, DVDs, Blu-ray, MP3. But remember, garbage in, garbage out. So put in the best quality in possible. Now what I like to do is I like to have this folder already up and open because that's the way you don't have to dig around through their file searching window dropper and I just click and drag I clicked the right one, yes I did, there we go, there's my recently recorded commentary as you can see here there's a little preview there no subtitles, there's all the information about it and um, now what I like to compress it to to WMV it will literally reduce the file size from about a gigabyte down to about a quarter of that size and still keep the HD quality. I have not yet had anyone point out the difference in, from when I started using this compressor which was about four or six videos ago. Nobody's pointed out anything so I'm assuming it's almost the same or and as near possible to you know point out the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a place where to put it. I don't know why it gives me two options for the same place, but I'll just click it. Maybe because, wait, what's the name of this folder here? Black Ops with a space. That would probably be safer to do it that one. There we go. Um, you can do same as source, which I highly recommend, as it will come out in HD 720p. You can try this. I'm not too sure if it will give you a 1080p option for YouTube but you may be stretching it as remember garbage in garbage out so I like to use same as source convert you can tell it to pass it once it'll high speed conversion roughly around 40 minutes for a 10 minute video two pass I've yet to try and it'll obviously go slower as it will do a better conversion but the file size will be a little bit larger as you can see the predicted outs, um, output size is 304 megabits megabytes sorry which is already a little over a quarter of the original file size which is amazing so instead of basically instead of taking an hour to upload to YouTube it can upload in 30 minutes all depending on your internet service provider so click convert and I'll let that convert and that'll take a little while but other than that I take the file straight from um, straight from my folder wherever I'm rendering it to there you can see it's appearing right now, it's being rendered and I go to YouTube and I upload it. And that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching guys, hopefully this is informative. Um, if you want me to do a actual setup video of how I have all my electronics and devices set up in my room, leave me a comment and maybe I can do one in the future. If you also like this video, please click, uh, take a few seconds and click the the thumbs up, give it a like, it helps out my videos a lot. Even give it a favorite if you so please. And if you, need. I actually highly suggest that you favorite this video as I've told you valuable information and you can always look back and figure out what I did wrong, what you may have done wrong while following these steps. I'm sorry if it's not the most professional, but I thought I'd just help out my fellow friends and subscribers. Anyways, this is Chief Landless. Showing you guys how to, basically what I'd use to um, create my commentaries for YouTube. Thanks for watching guys. Again, please take a moment to give a thumbs up and or a favorite. I highly suggest it. Thanks for watching. Chief out.